Are you ready to take your real estate investing business to the next level? Well, you're in the right place. This is the Real Estate Investing Morning Show. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. With your mentors, Wayne and Gabby. Good morning, and welcome to the Real Estate Investing Morning Show. Today is Friday, October 27th, 2023. The weather today will be a high of minus 1 degree in Edmonton, minus 4 degrees in Calgary, 9 degrees in Vancouver, minus 2 degrees in Saskatoon, and 21 degrees in Toronto. Thank you, Evie. Yeah, thank you very much. And good morning, everybody. We are broadcasting live as we do every morning, Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. Mountain Time on the Podbean app. If you would like to be a part of the live show, all you need to do is just download that app, Podbean, search up the Real Estate Investing Morning Show, and uh, give it a follow so you get notified when we are live in the morning. Uh, Big perks to being on the live show on the app is that you get to uh, not only be a part of this this amazing community of real estate investors who come in here every morning and, and chat and network, but also any real estate investing questions that you have, you just bring them, you put them in the chat there, and we will answer them for free. It's free coaching every morning. Uh, there are lots of different resources and programs and coaching and mentorship programs out there. We have a program, um, but we strongly recommend taking advantage of all the free resources first um, so you can get started. And um, when you're ready to scale up, and then look into programs later. But for now, just bring your questions here. Why not? You know, we'll answer them. We got you, fam. We got you. We got you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, everything uh, left behind from yesterday. We had an awesome show yesterday. Yeah, we had uh, Calvin Hexter of Calvin Realty on the show. He's always amazing. Yeah, uh, yeah. giving an Edmonton market real, uh, real Edmonton real estate market update. Um, talked a little bit about the the, the bylaw changes yesterday in Edmonton. Um, so there's lots of changes going on in Calgary too. I've been uh, seeing headlines about, yeah, I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get Jeff to our producer to um, put together some, some data on that first before I start talking about that. <laughs> um, so I have something to talk about, but um, yeah, there's lots of changes going on right now. It's uh, it sounds like um, every city is trying to find a way to tackle the, um, uh, the housing crisis. crisis. <laughs> And, uh, and, and, and yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of vacancy problems. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, well, you probably overheard, I was talking with our, our cleaner yesterday. Our cleaner, um, is looking for a new rental and she's been looking since I think she said August mm-hmm. and she cannot find a place. And so she was asking, you know, do you know anyone that has anything in this area? I'm like, uh, not really. Um, but she's saying that like she's got a few places booked. She's looked at a bunch of places like, you know, within her affordability because rents have gone up quite a bit here in mm-hmm. Edmonton, um, which kind of prices a lot of renters out um, of anything that's not like a one bedroom, two bedroom apartment or a basement suite. Yeah. Um, but she's saying like the basement suite we went to the other day was like dingy, like yeah, it's kind of really creepy. Like it had a very strong smell. Um, what ended up happening was the owner lived three hours away. So they, they gave the code for the lockbox or the keypad and said, Hey, here's the code. Go on in. Let me know what you think. Oh my God. That's like a massive no, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh wow. I said, that sounds like really creepy for, as a woman, she goes, yeah, like we were definitely watching our backs and just like, we we're very uncomfortable <laughs> with the whole thing. And, she, and I said, and, and watch that whole quote unquote basement suite thing, you know, with the legalities of it. I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, like whether you rent a legal suite or not a legal suite, it doesn't really matter to the tenant too, too much. It's, it's just, it's just a safety fire code thing, mostly for the tenant. Um, and a red tape kind of, you know, technicality for, you know, for an investor or owner. But I said for her, I mean, like, you know, a lot of those basement suites are not legal, which is fine. But um, the big concern is, uh, it, it is is more around like just like they kind of slap them together. Yeah. You know what sure. I mean? Yeah. Like they're not the, the, the nicest. 
And I remember even when we were back when we were renting, we were looking at uh, rental properties. Like you remember some of the basement suites we went to? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But um, small, dark, stinky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, and yeah. and she's been into like pretty much almost all of our properties. So she knows like what a nice, bright, clean, newly renovated basement suite looks like, which is, um, you know, in comparison, uh, probably not fun for them to to be on the search and, and going into those types of properties and being like, really, this is all I can afford. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I kicked my garbage can. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I feel kind of bad for her because, like, I, I think she's like she's a really nice person. She's amazing, and um, I think her circumstance was like, uh, you know, her and a and a and a roommate, which is like I'm thinking about it, like as she's saying it, like I'm trying to detach myself from being like the investor landlord thing, but like whenever I see um, younger people roommates, I'm like, nope, not my tenant profile, and I'm like, oh crap, like she's actually like a really good person. Yeah, so owns her own cleaning business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I can kind of like see how like I I already knew like she's going to be running into some issues. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Finding a place. Yeah. And um, typically people who don't fit like the perfect tenant profile or like the ones that like they kind of have to scrape the bottom of the barrel as far as the landlords and suites that are available. Yeah. So, yeah, it's um, there's some I I don't know. I I have a hard time calling it a crisis, Um, but. You know, I guess that's that's it's just is my capital, capitalistic, uh, you know, landlord side of it, uh, or perspective of it. Like I, I do know that like tenants are having trouble finding places. There's mm-hmm. not much available. Um, values of homes keep continuing to go up. See, all that sounds really good <laughs> from the, from the perspective <laughs> of an investor slash landlord, right? It sounds amazing. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, values are going up. There's there's not as many rental properties. Demand is up. Yeah, I'm gonna make some money. Um, but from the perspective of a tenant, it's, it's, uh, it's not good. So, um, yeah, there's, there's definitely a housing shortage and, and, um, vacancy, vacancy rates are up. So every city's trying to do their own thing to try and, uh, find a way to combat that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, you know what it's, <laughs> and it's funny, like, again, like from the perspective of an investor or landlord, it's like, they're just making it easier for us to make more money. It seems like, you know what I mean? Like the, the, the densification is like a huge opportunity for investors to take existing properties that do not serve us very well, that, um, you know, otherwise we can't really do much with and let's tear them down and, uh, and add multiple, uh, suites to make money. So well, it's they like, need someone to do it. Right. Yeah. Government's not going to do it. Yeah. So they're like, Hey people, here you go. Go have fun. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting to see how, how things are going to change over the next three to five years. And, and, and that's what we need to do as, as entrepreneurs and as investors is that you always need to look and see what's coming. You know what I mean? Uh, what opportunities, uh, what changes are coming and how can you, how can you make opportunities out of them? Yeah, right. For sure. Um, there, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with continuing with, with the same model of buying good properties and renting them out for long-term like long-term buy and hold has always been like, I don't think that it will ever go away. Mm -hmm. I think there will always be a need for long-term buy and hold. I think we'll go in through phases and dips where it's harder to make it work and you need to get creative during those dips. But then when things are good, just buy up, uh, you know, lots of long-term buy and holds again. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Or uh, actually I'm going to, I'm going to redact that. I'm going to rewind I've been saying this for the last six to 12 months. Now is the time to be buying those long-term buy and holds while the demand is low. While there's not many, because of those interest rates being low, I've been saying that. Hi. Everybody, hi sorry. <laughs> um, while those interest rates are high and there's not a whole lot of movement going on, now is the time to be getting some good deals on, on real estate for those long-term buy and holds because when interest rates go down and uh, cash flow goes up, uh, everybody's going to be jumping back in that market again and prices would be too high and then it'd be too hard to get those properties. So yeah. it'll be a short term pain. Yeah. All of that being said is what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that like you need to just get good at understanding what's going on and what are the potential things that be, could be coming up and how can I capitalize on this? How can I make money off of this? Yeah. What opportunities can I create? And, and that's how real estate investors win. 
Um, you can't stick to the same um, same strategy, mm -hmm. you know, consistently over 20 years because th things change mm -hmm. and you need to adapt. Yeah, for sure. Anything in the comments there? Yeah. Um, Chung says, would the high rent push tenants to satellite cities around Calgary and Edmonton? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So long as... Um, it depends on their uh, on their occupation. If they're able to work from home, absolutely. And or if it's not too far of a commute from whatever side of, you know, if they're working in the city, whatever side of the city they're in. Yeah. Um, so, for instance, you know, Edmonton, if they work north side, maybe going out to St. Albert, uh, that type of thing. So just as long as it's not too far of a commute, um, I think absolutely that yeah. people are looking at those areas as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, when people are looking for cars, they, what do they say? Cars cause less than Wetaskiwin? <laughs> um, now when people are looking for rentals, what do they say? Rents cost less than Stony Plain. <laughs> or Wetaskiwin. Or Wetaskiwin. <laughs> definitely Wetaskiwin. Rents are definitely less than Wetaskiwin. Um, <laughs> that is an inside joke for Edmonton and area investors only. <laughs> um, <laughs> little car commercial. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely. Uh, I remember, you know, years ago when we first moved to Leduc, first time we moved to Leduc, we were looking at it. It's like $40,000 cheaper than Edmonton. It's the same houses. Yeah. It's just a slightly farther commute. Um, that was like when I was still, you know, had a job and I was driving to work every day. But um, now, I mean, like, because we work remotely, um, we're full-time real estate investors. It's like, yeah, absolutely. Leduc makes total sense. It's a little quieter little cheaper why not you know what i mean mm -hmm. i kind of like the vibe of leduc as well yeah compared to edmonton mm -hmm. um yeah anyways uh satellite cities yeah it'll always make things i think generally speaking yes the answer to that that question is yes because like it's it's a great example of like what happened with the values um of properties along um uh down in niagara you know what i mean Val niagara values in ontario went up ridiculously because um, as Toronto real estate got more and more expensive, people just kept going further and further outside the city and, mm -hmm. and then commuting in. Mm -hmm. um, not Niagara would be like the end of the commute. Like that'd be the farthest people would go, but like, you know, places like Hamilton and, 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 and other um, cities, you know, down the highway the, the values were going up because of the fact that it's just too expensive in Toronto. So people were making the commutes every day um uh to, to to get the affordability to be able to own a home yeah i think it also depends on transportation too like if you drive that's one yeah. thing but if you don't you're in our circumstance in you know edmonton we i know they're they're working on it <laughs> but we have very poor public transportation um you know you can't get very many places using public transportation yeah so uh that's a, a massive factor whereas like the the gta has really figured out like the trains and the different like um transit systems and stuff so you can live you know <laughs> an hour or so out of the city and still get public transportation into the city. Yeah. 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 Paul is saying even Strathmore has, uh, is 50 kilometers from Calgary and, and it's gone nuts. The values mm -hmm. have gone nuts. Yeah. I did. I had a hard time uh, when I was saying it a few seconds ago about comparing us like Alberta to, um, Ontario or like to, 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 to Toronto and sur surrounding areas because Toronto and Edmonton are nowhere no. remotely close to each other. No. Um, and like, it's just, Toronto is such, so much bigger and so much crazier. Yeah. Um, Edmonton's like so young and so, uh, undeveloped compared to, uh, Toronto. Um, but as, as this city, our, like our, our city and the city that we invest in grows, um, you know, they're building that big train, um, from Edmonton to Calgary, they're all, they're proposed, it's proposed and it sounds promising. Mm -hmm. Um, that train right there is going to be a great example of if someone doesn't want to live in the big city mm -hmm. and they want to live in some of the like, you know, smaller towns along the rail, I can see a lot of cities around, um, South around, let's say around the airport in Edmonton. And around the rail, so there's going to be a stop in Red Deer, mm -hmm. halfway to uh, to Calgary. All those small towns around Red Deer are going to see a huge boost mm -hmm. because the affordability is is so much better around there. And 
you can get a lot more, not just like it's cheaper, you get a lot more. And I can see a lot of those towns around Red Deer, Sylvan Lake, etc. are going to see a huge boost in values when that train gets either um, uh, green lit or built. Yeah. Um, because anybody can literally live, you know, if they live in Red Deer, you can be in Calgary or Edmonton in less than 20 minutes. Yeah. I also think Sorry, of, what is it? It's a, is it a 45 minute train ride from Edmonton to Calgary? Is that what it was? I, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't remember, but something crazy like that. Jeff, you want to pull it up? <laughs> I think of um, people like myself who are from small towns and who would much rather live in small towns. Like I'm in Leduc, which is a city, um, a, a, a smaller city, but it's a city. And like, even this is like way bigger than what I grew up in. And so all these people who, you know, move to Alberta and are living in the big city who come from smaller places like that. And then to be given the opportunity, it's like, okay, well, wait, like, you know, I might work in Calgary or I might work in Edmonton or even in Red Deer, um, but I can live like on the outskirts of these places and some smaller little communities, maybe drive half an hour, hop on a train and be there. You know what I mean? Like it gives people the opportunity to um, settle into those smaller communities, which I mean, my, it might, it might force them to expand. Yeah. Might be, you know, <laughs> they might become a little bit bigger of communities if the demand is there. Um, I think that would that would maybe take time. It wouldn't be an instant like, well, everybody's moving to the outskirts. Like, true. Yeah. True. Uh, everybody always thinks that way. That, yeah. That is, oh my be... god, it's going to explode. But like that takes time. They said that about Leduc too. Yeah. They said that about Leduc back in like 2016. Yeah. That uh, the they're they're building. Uh, a car plant, they're building a mall, they're expanding the airport, their marijuana plant, marijuana <laughs> plants, uh, Amazon fulfillment warehouse, so many jobs coming to Leduc, it's going to be growing, it's going to boom, and then still hasn't. <laughs> it didn't. Yeah. Um, I mean, the population growth is happening. There's like tons of new communities popping up and builders are building like crazy and people yeah. are moving here, but yeah. they're still flying out to work. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Let's take a quick little commercial break. We'll uh, catch up on some of these comments that we're seeing here and then uh, uh, we'll continue on. Are you just starting to build your real estate portfolio? At Kirkwood and Brennan, we are real estate investors and mortgage brokers who understand real estate investing. Not only do we help you get a mortgage, but we help you build a better real estate portfolio. Check us out at kbmortgages.ca or call 778-847-0552. Take the time now so you have more time later. And we are back. And, um, you know, I say this every day and, and, and I truly mean it, that uh, if you guys are planning on buying or selling an investment property in uh, the Edmonton area, definitely give our friends Calvin Realty a call. They're awesome. Calvin Hexter, uh, the owner of Calvin Realty, was on the show yesterday. Um, just a wealth of knowledge. The whole team is a wealth of knowledge. But again, like, don't take my word for it. Um, I'm going to read a Google review from one of their clients and... Uh, to see what they're saying about it. Says here, I had the pleasure of working with Candace. She must be now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had the pleasure of working with Candace at the Calvin Realty. I mean, Gabby me and Gabby both had the same look on her face. Um, Gabby's looking her up. Um, I had the pleasure of working with Candace at the Calvin Realty team. She is very thorough and knowledgeable, a very well spoken and passionate person. Makes you feel like you know you made the right decision. That's awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> okay. All righty. I think the only other thing in the comments here was um, Glenn was mentioning that uh, Red Deer is getting pretty expensive too. I wasn't. I'm not sure if he was referring to to for renters or for um, purchasing, you know, properties. Um, but we've looked at the Red Deer market recently with yeah. our mentorship group, and um, certainly, you know. Uh, prices were lower for purchasing types of properties that we were looking at. Yeah. So maybe he means rent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, since you touched on the mentorship program, uh, we don't talk about it enough. I always forget. But if you guys are interested in the REI Masters Mentorship Program, uh, it's a 12 month mentorship program. It comes with, can I just say like fucking everything? Like yeah. everything? Yeah. And um, <laughs> it's, it's funny. What reminded me of it also was Glenn, because Glenn, um, 
uh, I don't, did you see the video last night? No. Glenn posted a really nice video in the mentorship program in the, in the, in the private Facebook group. Um, and, uh, yeah, gave me a big smile this morning. Uh, nice. And he was talking about, um, this, uh, the, the documents and stuff that you put in the master's vault about like every contract that you can possibly need and checklist. And it's all there. Mm -hmm. Everything's there. Um, we do weekly co group coaching on every Thursday. So we had a group coaching last night. We went about two, two and a half hours as usual. Um, we try and get every possible thing answered um, that anyone has. We'll I'll stay until however long you guys need. Um, any question you need during the day, any Q and A, we answer it immediately. Um, uh, you have full access to that. Uh, monthly workshops. I mean, geez, like what, what's our work? We have a workshop tomorrow yes. for the REI Master's Mentorship Program. What's what's it yes. tomorrow? Uh, Self-managing your rental properties. Self-managing your rental properties. So that's a, that's a full workshop kind of designed around um, how to manage your properties on your own. And also we, we took a real... Um, uh, we, we, we approached it from the position of a lot more uh, from someone who is trying to self-manage remotely mm -hmm. because I know that that's a big thing that people are having trouble with. They're, they, they're wanting to, to invest in different areas, but they're afraid they can't afford property management because interest rates are high. So um, they, they want to self-manage, but the, the thought of self-managing remotely is scary. But Gabby and I have been self-managing remotely for years um, we don't even go to our rental properties anymore so um we, we took that kind of approach for this workshop for tomorrow and that's exclusive to the rei master's mentorship program next month i think we're uh, the workshop is on hmm. filling <laughs> dang it we've been so engulfed in this one that we're doing tomorrow that i can't remember <laughs> I, I, it's, i'm close i'm close uh yeah i think it's um filling vacancies okay um i can't remember exactly what it's called but next month we're going to be talking about filling vacancies um so getting your units filled uh, a full workshop on that um i was just telling the, the the mentees uh the masters last night that we're working on uh a real estate development workshop as well um exclusively for the rei masters mentorship program like you you need it we'll do it you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. there. It's, it's, um, if you guys are familiar with Barry and Donna McGuire and their, um, creative home study kits, all their courses are, uh, are free as well. Agreements for sale, seller financing, uh, joint ventures, rent to own, fix and flip, wholesaling. <laughs> Did I get them all? I think so. Yeah. Like <laughs> it, it, I said it earlier, like anything you need, it's there. Like it's, it's a one-stop shop. So, um, but it's, it's, I'll, I'll admit it's for action takers. Mm -hmm. If, um, even with all the resources that you can possibly think of at the end of the day, you're the one that has to do the work. We're just there to guide you and give you the resources and to provide our wisdom and guidance and support, but we are not buying properties for you. You have to buy the properties yourself. You're the one that needs to develop personally in order to become the person that you need to become in order to be successful. We're going to show you how to do it, but you have to do it. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, even though it is the best program in Canada, hands down, I can say, I, I, I'm, I'm not afraid to say it. Um, you are the one that has to put the work in, so you need to be prepared to do that. Um, but we're there to hold your hand. Anyways, reimasters.ca for that. Reimasters.ca. Um, or just shoot me a message, and uh, I don't mind hopping on a call with you to see if it's right for you. I'll let you know if it's not. <laughs> Will you? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll let you down nicely though. I'll let you down <laughs> softly. Uh, again, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with people coming to the podcast every morning and getting yeah. free coaching as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like put your questions in here. I'll answer them. But what you'll find is that you'll kind of reach, you'll reach a point where it's like, okay, I, I'm getting all these answers, but I don't have all these courses. I'm getting all these answers, but I don't have all these resources that they're talking about. I'm getting all these answers, but I'm, I need a little bit more guidance. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I need a plan. And that's what the mentorship program's for. Yeah. And Glenn says, or talk to me who is in it and give you my honest opinion. Mm. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, take the good reviews, take the bad reviews, be a critical thinker and make decisions for yourself. Mm -hmm. Bada bing, bada boom. <sighs> 
Uh, Glenn says, I went from having difficulty paying for one my one house to having two rentals in less than one year. Mm-hmm. Not to mention the fact that this guy's working like a, like a maniac. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, should, you should probably <laughs> add that in there too, Glenn, that like you are working nights and working a ridiculous amount of hours. Um, and he's in the process, like you're in the process of building uh, an amazing rent to own business as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Homes to Grow is, is, is getting there. Like it, it's, it's a lot of work that that's involved yeah. with building a business, yeah, doing is. the research and development, getting all the graphics and the website and everything all together, building your funnels and, and, and your applications, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, good for, good for Glenn and, and for Richard, his partner, mm-hmm. um, who's also in the master's mentorship program, um, for doing all that. It's, it's a big year. R- well, Richard, he's, he had a pretty, uh, Richard's been dealing with some, some stuff too. Is Richard here today? No. Yeah, he's dealing with some, he had a deal kind of go sideways. So he's been a little busy as well. Mm-hmm. Anywho, uh, Glenn says, I work eight hours, five nights a week, uh, r- run a company and two rentals, but the joy in it is fantastic. I'm so damn happy. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, hey, so while I was talking to our cleaner yesterday, um, it brought something up uh, that I forgot about. Um, for some reason, I can't remember how it got brought up, but she brought up um, Montreal, Quebec, but Montreal specifically. And um, we were talking about. I so, remember. What the, fr- <laughs> what the frick were we talking about? We were talking you guys about- were talking about how she's looking right now for a place to rent in November and the pickings are, are slim. And yeah. you were telling her how most landlords, you know, have their leases start and end in the spring to summer um, as it's a more ideal time for tenants to be moving and and for us to be filling vacancies. Right. And, she, and then she's like, yeah, have you heard how they do it in Montreal? Yeah. And I didn't. You, you, you do like, we've talked about it so many times. You just forget because it's kind of not relevant to you. Okay. <laughs> so they all move, uh, like they have all of their leases start and end on the same day. So like on July 1st on Canada day, that's when everybody's leases and they pack up, they move and the next tenants move in all on the same day. And it's like a thing. And it's like, you can't get Look at this French kid. Sorry. I'm not trying to be like that, but like, <laughs> is a, he moving on his bike? He's, he's got a bike with a trailer behind it. Yeah. And this, this is like, what is this? <laughs> July 1st. Um, moving day or in French, jour de management is a tradition, but not a legal requirement in the province of Quebec, Canada dating from the time when the province used to mandate fixed terms for leases of rental properties. It falls on July 1st, which is also Canada Day. What the heck? Okay, so that's the part that I wasn't like, I just, I look at this. I know a couple people, a couple lady. I'm trying to talk, Wayne. Sorry. (laughs) Nobody can see your pictures. Um, I knew a couple people who are from Quebec and so some investors and so, um, they used to talk about that, about the the difference and how like everybody would move and that sort of thing. So that's how I learned about it, which was years ago, like probably, I don't know, maybe six, seven years ago now. And, um, and then it only was, was brought up again in my world when we had a tenant move from Montreal. Yeah. And, um, and so just like educating them in the differences of, you know, it's not like that here. And so that's, that's what brought it back up for me. And then randomly our cleaner brings it up yesterday. <laughs> All about the moving day in Quebec. So like these pictures, it's like, I think the most common picture is like um, the fact that people have trailers. They can't get a U-Haul. <laughs> because, I, and like, that's, that's the one thing I brought up yesterday was like, how does U-Haul stay in business? The rest of the year. <laughs> the rest of the year. Because all the moving is on one day. Like they, I can just imagine that it's like, it's almost like Christmas or like, you know, Black Friday where they need to get as many U-Hauls in as possible from across the country to, to prep for this day. And then it's almost like, you know, they shut down shop for the rest of the year. <laughs> and then they just open back up again. It's kind of like the Halloween stores. 
Yeah. You know, the Halloween stores pop up like mm-hmm. a month before and then they just disappear. Mm-hmm. That's probably the exact same thing with U-Hauls. Like they'll just slap a U-Haul sticker on the front of a strip mall and then everybody can go in there and get their booking in. But yeah, from what I can see is it's all cheap trailers everywhere. Um, the 1st of July, Canada Day for most Canadians and Premier Juliette on or the moving day for Quebecers. Uh, moving day in Quebec is a well-practiced tradition dating all the way back to when the province used to command fixed terms for leases on rental properties. This date... Uh, it just so happens to fall on Canada, July 1st, Canada Day, July 1st. The tradition was first set in place as a humanitarian measure of the French colonial government of New France, who forbade landlords from evicting their tenant farmers before the winter snow melted. While originally the French law in the 18th century set the moving day to be on May 1st, that later changed. Uh, on May 1st, children were still in school, so and moving was a huge inconvenience for the parents. That was why in 1973, the Quebec government decided that it would be a better fit to switch dates and make July 1st the official movie day. Keep in mind that July 1st is also Canada Day. And while it is still celebrated in Canada and Quebec, one can argue that it is not as popular as in other regions Mm -hmm. throughout the country. Um, The 24th of June is the Quebec national holiday, uh, whereby Quebecers celebrate the distinct French identity of the province, both culturally and artistically. Um, according to Statistics Canada, the home ownership rate in Quebec has always been below the national average. In, t- in 2016, it was the lowest among the Canadian provinces at 61.3%. According to city spokesman Philippe, uh, Philippe Sebrin, uh 250,000 people across the province moved on or before or around July 1st in 2019. In Montreal, about 70,000 Montreal households move each year. Oh my God. <laughs> it's just like, you look at these pictures and it's just like, there's just beds and chairs out on the streets <laughs> and the sidewalks. Can you imagine so many people moving on the same day? I wonder if they have like a large item pickup trucks coming through on like July 2nd and just like cleaning the streets up of like stuff. Oh my <laughs> God. Stuff up behind. <laughs> on July 1st, you can find moving vans clogging all the str- all around the streets. Desperate people who forgot to pack something or didn't manage to book a professional moving company. An old fridge somewhere on the streets. Total madness. <laughs> a lot of people leave furniture, appliances, and des- or appliances in designated dumping sites or just on the streets. This is a municipal headache, actually. The officials urge people to recycle as much as possible, but people are too busy on those days and can hardly think about their next home. Uh, so the streets and sidewalks of the uh, sidewalks, of the streets look like a big shop for junkers and treasure hunters. One may actually find some valuable items as well as the owners just leave it there to be taken. Finding and booking moving companies for first of July is yet another huge headache for Quebecers. Usually people book their movers a few months before. Um, I'm going to continue on. Cause like, I, I want to keep stop. I, I keep trying to find a spot to stop, but there's just so much <laughs> July 1st is the busiest day for the moving companies in, in Quebec. Because of the high demand, most moving companies raise their hourly rates considerably, some to 250% or more. That day alone, a mover can earn 15% of its annual revenue. Wow. (laughs) It's quite natural that movers also get stressed, missed a few bookings, or run out of trucks. Mm -hmm. What? So like you think you've got a booking and then they don't show up? That's why the moving companies prepare for that day for months. Most movers hire extra hands so they don't lose customers. Oh my God. Uh, one of the big recommendations here is avoid moving on July 1st, but like if all the rent similar to like what we were talking about with our cleaner, yeah, it's slim pickings because every, everything else is vacant on that day. Um, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of like be prepared, um, stuff in this article, change your address ahead of time, make arrangements for the moving day. Obtain moving estimates at, uh, and quotes at least three months in advance with three different companies. Um, oh my God. In 2020, a lot of tenants were unable to move or had problems with the landlords. Uh, this year, however, as the moving companies adapted the new rules with um, uh, coronavirus. Sorry, that just sounds weird saying that. What's- <laughs> COVID. COVID. Yeah, thank you. Um, I can't say coronavirus without saying it like coronavirus. <laughs> uh, while the pandemic still poses its unique challenges and inconveniences for a move, July 1st is coming. And, oh, this is written, this was written back 
in early 2020. Oh. That's why. Okay. Um, so this is like, they have like all these, always keep personal hygiene in check, keep a safe distance, <laughs> disinfect the important things. Oh, okay. So this is all like, oh my goodness. In preparation. Yeah. For moving day 2020 in Quebec. Oh my God. That must have been an absolute nightmare. Yeah. So that's interesting that it's, you know, it's, it's not like a requirement. It's not government mandated anymore, but that like, because for so long, it's been a thing. If you were like that odd landlord, that's like, oh, okay, well, whatever. Like we don't need to do July 1st. You don't have tenants looking and you don't have, it, it's like, it, it is like our situation, except like times a thousand. You know what I mean? Like if we have a rental vacant in December, it's like wah wah. You're not going to have many people looking to move in December, right? Yeah. But it's like, yeah, like a thousand times worse if you're trying to fill a vacancy there because that's just what everybody's used to. It's a thing. Yeah. Right? So How could you get away from that? It would take literally like a century of like landlords being like, I'm fighting against this. <laughs> The fact that you just said it's going to take a century for change <laughs> for landlords and tenants to to finally break it'd be a hard old. one to it would be a hard one to break <laughs> it would tell me i'm wrong oh i'm just just trying to bite my tongue <laughs> um that is that is pretty funny um <laughs> of all the change that we could be working on <laughs> break, this is the big the one we're going to spend a century on <laughs> um no, that's, that's, that's honestly, like, I, I probably heard it, but like, like you said, it was, it was probably something that just went in one year or out the other and it didn't really retain it. Um, we have quite a few listeners and, and it's, well, our, our data shows Montreal, so it could be anywhere around surrounding areas, but, um, no one talks about investing in Quebec, mm -hmm. like no one. Yeah. I'm not, I. I keep an open mind. I, I have a very strong, large network in Canada. No one talks about Quebec. There's a few other provinces as well. Um, very little people talk about Manitoba. There's a lot of investors in Manitoba, uh, Winnipeg area, but not a whole lot of people invest there. Um, uh, any of the, the colder provinces and territories, people don't invest there really much. I've seen a couple people talk about Yellowknife um, in passing. Um, but Quebec is one of those ones that I don't ever hear ever. Mm -hmm. And um, it's probably a big reason why I never really retained this was because it was just like, yeah, it's never a topic of conversation. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's another big thing that we learned about, uh, about Quebec there when that tenant that moved from Quebec um, was, was very confused. It was like a huge culture shock for this person moving to Edmonton um, because uh, the whole July 1st thing. And also uh, she wanted to bring her appliances. Yeah. And she saw in the ad that there was appliances in place. And she was like, well, where are we going to store our our appliances? If you have appliances there, where are we going to put ours? I thought she was just a little, like when I'm seeing those emails come through, I wasn't, I wasn't dealing with that at that time, but I could see the emails coming through. I'm thinking this woman's, okay, like just, you guys know me. I thought she was a little dense. Like the things that she was saying, I'm like, what the fuck is she talking about? Yeah. And why does she want to store her appliances? Yeah. It's when you don't like forgetting everything we just talked about. That just sounds really weird. Like where, well, where the heck am I supposed to keep my appliances? I'm like, why the hell are you moving around with appliances? Yeah. And um, th like, thankfully, I, this was also something that I knew about from those contacts several years ago is that they move with their, they own their appliances. And when they move from one suite to another on July 1st, they move with their appliances. They bring their appliances with them. They're theirs. They put them in, in place. And like, to me, that just sounds like, oh my God, so much scuffing of everything. Like, could oh. you imagine moving? It's like the, the biggest headache for you is like moving like your couch and your bed and your really heavy cabinet. Now imagine having like five extra appliances that you're like, <laughs> I 100% would hire movers every single time. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So thankfully the I remembered that though. And I was like, oh no, like you do not need to bring your appliance. Like you're moving to Alberta, sell your appliances. You will not need those again. 
Like, it, this isn't a thing that you will need renting in Alberta. And they were like, oh, really? Okay, yeah, 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 we'll sell them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, uh, that was interesting. That was, well, was the first time we've had someone moving from Quebec. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've had people moving from other provinces before. Mm-hmm. That was the first time for Quebec. Um, whatever happened with that tenant? Uh, they were newly married and it didn't end well very quickly after moving. So they actually separated within a few months and, um, they, uh, I want to say abandoned their lease. They broke their lease and, um, did we have some sort of a, yeah, we, we gave them, them, yeah, we gave them an option to pay a couple months, uh, worth of, um, of rent for us to have time to fill the vacancy and we just cut it. They, they signed off on that saying, yeah, we agree. Oh, okay. They paid us and they left. Oh, okay. So, yeah. um, a common thing that people get worried about when they're self-managing is, you know, what if the tenants want to break the lease? Um, so we were able to just come up with an agreement with them. You know, this is a fixed term lease. We, uh, you are responsible for the duration of the term. However, if you, want to, um, if you are requesting to terminate the lease or you are planning to abandon your lease, then, um, you can either be responsible till we find a suitable replacement as per the residential tenancies act of Alberta, or, um, if you want us to agree to terminate this lease today, um, here's what we need. And then we, we probably offered them some form of a breakout fee or something like that. Yeah. Um, which is pretty standard for us because, um, We've actually written it into our leases now, uh, early, early termination fee. Yeah. We were just like, because it does happen. People have life events that happen. It's not like everybody's like, you know, just a holes and like, are like, oh, actually I don't like this place I'm leaving. Like it, that's not normally the circumstance. Like there's normally something that's like, you know, we are divorcing yeah. or, you know, like I, we got a job transfer or whatever it may be. Like there's situations in life that happen. And so it does come up. Um, I'm not going to say like ultra regularly, but it comes up. And so uh, within the last couple of years, we decided to write uh, early termination um, clause into our leases that is basically, I think like, I can't, I can't remember without looking it up, but two or three months worth of probably two. Cause one month isn't enough. Yeah. One month isn't enough because if for whatever reason you don't find a tenant, I mean like in, in this, in this market, it's probably quite easy to find somebody within a month, but in other markets, like prior to, you know, what we're in right now, sometimes it takes longer than that. And so the two months of uh, worth of vacancy uh, just covers us to make sure we're good. So it's and not out of allows our them to walk away and to not just like be hanging in the in the wind, being like, "Are we responsible for the next month or aren't we?" Like, right. you know. So and it also it gets us money up front too, so we're not chasing them. Yeah. Because once they move, it's like, and they don't pay that next month, mm-hmm. we have to chase them down for it. So it's just an offer to them. Hey, yeah. here's a not like you are responsible till we find a suitable replacement. Or if you'd like to just be done with it now and not owe anything more above and beyond, just just pay us these two months worth of rent equal to two months worth of rent and we will terminate the lease today. And then we will take those funds like on our end, we'll use those funds towards allocating to cover the vacancy while we find a suitable replacement. If it takes us three months to find a suitable replacement, then then that extra month is at our cost. Mm-hmm. But you know, we always want to make sure that the, the money that we um, collect from that offer to terminate the lease early is enough that we don't have to pay anything out of our own pocket because it's not our responsibility. Yeah. Like they are responsible to the end of the, to the, end of the year. But yeah. again, like, Hey, if you guys want to be out of it and done with it and not have to hear from us ever again, here's our offer. If not, then we will work on finding a suitable replacement. And then once we do, we'll let you know and you're responsible up until that point. Yeah. It also helped create like um, an expectation. So like when we're signing the lease, that's an area of the lease that I have them initial. Like I always, uh, there's, there's sections that I get them to initial just to like draw closer attention to make sure they've really gone through it. And instead of having to have that conversation, every time somebody wants to break a lease, it's like, well, you're responsible, but you know, but if you want to break it here, yeah. it, this way, it's just like, please refer to section whatever and let us know your decision. <laughs> that's that's smart. Then it's not like a yeah, it's yeah. not just like a random thing that we propose. And yeah. then you'll see it on some Facebook page later. That's like, can my landlord do this? Yeah. Um 
it's just an offer. That's all it is. Yeah. I want to go back to um, when you were talking about, I'm going to rewind about five minutes, but I want to go back to when you were talking about uh, um, uh, Quebec tenants moving on July 1st and everybody moving those appliances mm -hmm. and the wear and tear. You kind of skipped over that really quickly. Um, that's a, that's a huge expense. Um, and one of the big reasons why having tenants, long-term tenants will actually make you a lot more money. Um, everybody's always looking the, at the performa and be like, okay, how well is this property going to perform? But in my opinion, I think that finding long-term tenants is the best way to get the best possible return on your investment mm -hmm. because some of the biggest expenses that you incur as an investor and as a landlord come from when people move in and move out vacancies like when a unit is sitting empty while you try and find a replacement and repairs and maintenance when there's vacancies is your two biggest expenses it's not the furnace it's not the it's not the the appliances i know trust me they're up there they're second but in my opinion when someone moves out and they're scuffing walls and stuff like that. Like a lot of that's like quote unquote wear and tear. And, you know, there's huge damages and gouges and stuff like that. Then you can repair it and repaint it, um, you know, and, and remove, you know, deduct it from the security deposit. But for like normal wear and tear of like a couch being up against the wall and just like those black scuffs who are the top of the couches, that's not damage. Mm -hmm. And that will... If and little got, nicks here and there, like over a couple of years add up yeah. to like, oh, that wall needs to be... <laughs> and like, if there's, a, even if there's a little bit of a gouge or a nick or something like that, you know, if you've ever taken the, the can of paint from the basement and dabbed it, that wall looks ridiculous now that you have that, you know, three inch square of, you know, paint dab there. It's not the same color because it's faded. So in order for you to repaint that whole wall, it's like, well, can you justify charging them to repaint the whole wall? And that one side, that one wall is different color than every other wall in the room now. So like, should you be repainting the whole, you see what I mean? Like uh, eventually over time, you're going to need to repaint the whole, th the whole floor or the whole house. When you have people moving in and out once every year, people are coming in every year and looking at this place, asking, you know, thinking to themselves, should I, do I want to live here? If there's three inch squares, of you know paint dabs everywhere and gouges and scuffs on the walls and stuff like that it's not going to look very desirable mm -hmm. so you kind of have to make that executive decision to like do i do i repaint this whole place do i spend seven thousand dollars and get this place repainted once every three years or do i just leave it as a shitty rental and, and, and get people who aren't going to treat it you know very nicely because it was handed to them poorly mm -hmm. you know what i mean so if if you can find tenants who stay for 10 years and you don't have any vacancies and you don't have to go in there and repaint as often and replace the flooring as often, you're going to make significantly more money. Yep. Quebec, probably not so much. No. Yeah. Because of those, uh, well, uh, sorry, because of the appliances. Yeah. Can you imagine, like you're talking about getting a couch in and out and a, and a, and a big cabinet in and out, like fridge, stove and stuff like that. Ding, 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 ding. Like the dings on the walls must be ridiculous. Yeah, I kind of vaguely remember um, that also the mention of like basically landlords like needing to have like a handyman on site regardless because like there is going to be stuff that needs to be like repaired and touched yeah. up because of all of the moving of stuff. And like that's probably, you know, we talk about how U-Haul probably makes or movers make 15% of their, you know, revenue on that day for the year. I imagine that like, handyman painters like those type of people are also insanely busy they're probably pre-booked by landlords to and like I'm, I'm just like as you're talking i'm thinking like okay if i was a handyman i'd be like on that day people could book me for like whatever like they can decide how many hours but like that's set you can book me for four hours and that's what you're paying me plus my supplies and my thing and then i have another booking half an hour later starting at this other property you need to book me for a minimum you know four hours or whatever it is and like just having it where it's not like i'll go in and i'll charge you for whatever it takes it's like you yeah. are booking me for the day or for whatever how do property management companies operate in quebec <laughs> i don't know just just straight up just working remotely only dealing with tenants requests but like yeah. no filling vacancies that's for sure mm. goodness gracious be wild 
Uh, I wanted to to take a look at the Montreal market as well, because I know that we have Montreal listeners and I, I think we'll wrap up the show with this. Um, sorry, my sinuses are bugging me. Um, a bit of an update on the Montreal housing market for 2023. Um, got an article here that is going over uh, the updates uh, from September, um, which is the most up to date. Um, so the benchmark single family home in Montreal increased by 2.6% year over year to $610,800 in September, 2023. So they got a 2.6% jump um, in, the, in the single family home. Montreal's benchmark townhouse multiplex price increased by 4.1% year over year um, to 583,000. And the benchmark condo price in Montreal increased by 3.3% year over year to 391,000. Pretty pricey, mm -hmm. pretty pricey um, as far as Canadian um, standards go. Um, the average rent for an apartment in Montreal increased by 14.6% year over year to $1,784. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's pricey. Uh, Montreal housing market summary, uh, data from the Quebec Professional Association of Real Estate Brokers, the QPARIB. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think that one's going to stick. Um, indicates that the average price of resale residential homes sold across Montreal in September, 2003 was $518,600, an increase of 2.5% compared to a year ago with a sales to new listings ratio of 47%. The Montreal housing market remained balanced for September. Um, here's a quote. Uh, the Montreal CMA market continued to stabilize in September with transactional activity comparable to that of a very quiet month of August. If sales are up compared to the same period last year, it is because of 12 months ago, activity had started to drop towards an all-time low. The same phenomenon is observed in the mainly positive variation in prices. Okay, so it's because they had a bit of a slower year last year. At that time, uh, that's why there was a, a bit of a jump. While the economic context is deteriorating against the backdrop of persistent inflation, the new wave of interest rate hikes at the start of the summer translated into a more cautious approach by buyers in September. Household purchasing power remains eroded by inflation, as you can expect, and the savings cushion accumulated during the pandemic is rapidly depleting. For their part, sellers try to cash in their added value while market conditions, supported by a solid migratory flow, are still favorable. So um, sellers are definitely trying to cash in right now because of the conditions, because of all the migration. Um, but buying power is obviously diminished quite, quite significantly. Uh, good marketing at the right price will be more and more critical in attracting a motivated buyer pool, which will likely be smaller and more selective right now. This is particularly the case for single family homes as prices have almost reached the last peak of 2022. Uh, residential property sales are rising in all of the of the main metropolitan areas of the Montreal CMA. The island of Montreal and St. Jean sur Richelieu uh, with 1,007 and 64 transactions respectively have notable increases of 18 and 14% compared to last year. Wow. Uh, really testing my French today. Uh, <laughs> Vaudreuil Solange uh, had 125 sales. The North Shore of Montreal had 650 sales and the South Shore of Montreal had 650 sales. Um, follow with respective increases of 11%, 7%, and 7%. So they're all seeing some big increases from last year. Uh, Laval at 242 sales is an exception and posted a 10% drop. Hmm. Wah, wah. All median prices are increasing compared to those a year ago in September, 2022. The median price of a single family home stood at 549,000, an increase of 3%. With a median price of 402,000 for condominiums, condominiums saw a year over year increase of 6%. Multiplexes sold at a median price of $730,000 saw their price jump uh, of 7% on a year over year basis. On an annual basis, you're, I can see Gabby's eyes rolling back. Some people like this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> On an annual basis, the median prices for single family homes in the main metropolitan areas of the Montreal CMA 
uh, varied between negative 4% and uh, plus 11%. The decline is 4% and 1% in Vendriol Solange and the South Shore of Montreal. Okay, I'm just reading a bunch of numbers now at this point. Is anyone still listening? Uh, numbers have not dropped, surprisingly. <laughs> Um, why are you still here? <laughs> just kidding. There's, there's more of an article. I just didn't want to keep, uh, just didn't want to keep reading all these, these numbers and stuff like that. I mean, you can find all this information online. Um, but it's interesting stuff. I mean, again, nobody talks about Montreal. So I feel like, um, I'm going to see a huge boost in Montreal listeners, um, <laughs> here on our stats, because I'm going to, I'm going to label this, uh, this episode investing in Montreal, Quebec. And suddenly it's going to be the only podcast episode ever done on Montreal, Quebec. <laughs> um, let me, let me continue here for you though. Uh, who's buying Montreal real estate until recently, the primary demographics driving demand in Montreal's residential property market were those looking to upsize their homes. Uh, also foreign investors looking to purchase an investment property in one of Canada's university towns, professionals who recently migrated to Canada in the past five years. Uh, and out of province migrants advancing their careers in and around Montreal. Um, I know one person who bought an investment property in Montreal a few years ago. I think it was a pre pre built condo or, or what do you, um, one of those, why can't I put my words together? Pre-construction condos. Um, I know one person that did uh, other than that. I don't really know anyone. Um, with the passing of the omnibus, uh, omnibus, Bill C-32 led legislation, including the foreign buyer's ban and anti-flipping tax. Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> I was having a good week. Uh, <laughs> the Montreal home buyer's demographic may be shifting away from foreign investment. However, it remains to be seen whether efforts to limit foreign buyers in Montreal will have an impact, according to Statistics, to Statistics Canada. Foreign investors make up less than 5% of homeowners in Montreal's toner, total ownership, home ownership. I better, wow. I better wrap this up yeah. pretty soon here. They're using big words. <laughs> Home ownership? <laughs> Omnibus. <laughs> However, that number significantly jumps to 50% when considering properties valued over $1 million for non-Quebec residents. Uh, Multi-property investors. According to an article by Newswire, investors and multi-property investors accounted for about 16% of Montreal's home buyers in 2021, particularly in the downtown. Uh, the numbers were even higher. First-time home buyers have traditionally accounted for more than half of all purchases. However, that share has slowly declined, reaching a low of 46.8% in June of 2021, with real estate investors and multiple property owners picking up the difference. According to Stats Canada, multiple property owners represent 15% of owners in BC and Ontario and 20% in New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, but hold 30 and 40% of existing housing stock respectively. Um, Final thoughts, Montreal's property market is set to remain strong as increases are expected for the remainder of 2023. The average home price in Montreal is recovering quicker than in other areas around Canada. However, this comes after months of record consecutive price rises during the pandemic and one of the most intense periods of price appreciation the city has ever seen. While the property market appears to be recovering value in Montreal, it's important to remember that some volatility should be expected over the long term. It's always a good time to buy a property if you're a qualified buyer. Over the long term, expect property values to keep surging as immigration brings more buyers to the Canadian market. That's promising. Nice. Um, if you're looking for a home in 2023, expect an imminent turnaround in the housing market over the next few months um, and contact a professional. Okay. Um, sounds like there's some opportunity. I mean, as far as like, so Gabby and I, we talk all, all about like at least our market that we invest in. It's always been like super boring, no appreciation, just like solid, good cash flow. But you know, there's a lot of investors that are looking for some more of that fast cash or some somewhere they can pl plop their money where they can kind of find some reasonable cash flow, maybe some midterm rentals. Um, they can pick up some properties and hold in their portfolio. They can see some, some, some decent appreciation or market growth in the next few years. Um, for those of you math nerds or, or for those of you that aren't really um, as savvy or... Um, experienced and, and running the numbers for real estate. When you're looking at your three profit centers of cash flow, mortgage pay down and appreciation, appreciation is always going to get you your best ROI because 
that's where, I mean, you're buying a property historically uh, or traditionally for, you're only putting 20% of the purchase up and the bank is bringing the other 80%, right? So by you putting 20% up, one fifth, the value of the property, if it goes up 10%, your investment does not go up 10%. Your 20% down payment investment does not go up 10% if your property goes up 10%. It actually goes up 50% because you're leveraging the bank's money for the rest of the purchase. So if your $500,000 property goes up to $550,000, on your $100,000 investment on that property, you made a 50% return. So that's where you're going to get a big chunk of your ROI. The best bang for your buck is going to be an appreciation always, but we don't bank on it because appreciation is never guaranteed. You can look at cash flow, you can look at mortgage pay down, you can lock in that interest rate for the next five years and you know how much money you're going to be making. Appreciation is, is you can't control that. It's just the market. So it's never a bad thing to invest in a market where you do have some potential growth, um, where there is some appreciation coming. Um, don't take my word for it. Don't take the word of one random article that I pulled up this morning. Thank you, Jeff. Um, you know, definitely do your own market research. But for the love of God, if everybody goes and buys in Montreal today, I'm going to be very disappointed. <laughs> do your own market research, okay? On the numbers. But I, I, you know, the fact that there is some potential growth there, I think is some opportunity. Um, I'd like to do a little bit more research into the Quebec market, um, mainly uh, the Montreal market, because I know we have listeners there. Um, one thing I'm very interested in doing, which, um, which I have a little, I, I've been doing the last week or so, um, is I'd like to look into the residential tenancies act mm -hmm. because we've been preparing for the workshop for tomorrow for the RIA master's mentorship program, uh, about self-managing your properties. I, um, I did some market research for a bunch of provinces in Canada, um, as part of a little exercise of. Um, how different provinces uh, vary um, and how their the real estate, uh, sorry, their residential tenancies act, they, how they vary. Um, one of them, I didn't look up Quebec though. That was one of the provinces I didn't It'd look It'd probably at. be an interesting one to read through. Yeah. I feel. Yeah. Interesting because it's probably very different than, mm -hmm. than ours and probably very different than other provinces. Some of the provinces like Saskatchewan, um, Newfoundland, Alberta, they're all kind of similar. But then you got like Ontario, where it's just like completely like in BC. Yeah. BC. Like we're special. We have our own thing. I'm assuming Quebec is very similar to that uh, based on what I've heard so far. So it'd be interesting. I, I'd like to, we did, we, we've done Alberta before on the show. We've done Newfoundland on the show before. Maybe in the coming weeks, we should do uh, Quebec and see what's going on there and kind of compare it and, and, uh, I don't know, you never know. It could be a really good, fair, balanced yeah. RTA, mm -hmm. which could mean, you know, maybe people haven't been looking at it and maybe this, you know, now they should be looking at it. Yeah. There could be some opportunities. Let's do it. Let's do some market research on, on Quebec, Montreal. Sound good? I don't see anybody like jumping up and be like, yeah, <laughs> let's do it. Come on. Where's the, where's the chat today? Hoorah. Why is the chat so freaking darn quiet? Nobody's talked about anything in, since Garrett was talking about uh, moving appliances in Latin America <laughs> about a half an hour ago. All right. Anyways. Hey, Richard's here. I was talking about Richard earlier. Yeah. He jumped in after. All right. Good to see you, Richard. And he says, hoorah. <laughs> All right, guys. That wraps up our show um, and, and wraps up our week. Um, looking forward to seeing everybody at the workshop tomorrow for self-managing your rental properties. All right, Masters, we'll see you guys there. Everybody else. See you on Monday. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Real Estate Investing Morning Show. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Interested in being a guest on the show? Send us an email to info at reimorningshow.com. 